multi-brand diagnostics, actuator testing, data logging, mileage correction, and free lifetime updates. All of these are hiding in this small little box. It is called the X-Tool A30M. It is strong metal body with a little bit of plastic and some rubber but very well and gives a nice feeling to to holding it in the hand in the beginning you will say that it is quite gimmicky it has two buttons on the side this one and that one which start the leds and you get some strange source of light i was considering the biggest gimmick on the face of the earth until the moment that i really needed it working on a free series at night when i had to put all the plastic trim back so that the customer can take the car. These LEDs were a lifesaver, so when you will need it, you will see how, how important it is. Also, it features a nice little screen, which will show the voltage of your battery, or which will show the voltage of the car's battery, so that you're not spending too much time diagnosing the vehicle and discharging the battery. Lifesaver. We discussed what's in the box. We will need now to make use of this uh, this type of device, we will need a mobile device, a tablet or a phone that runs iOS or Android. Many of us will be using our normal phones. Before installing it, you need to know uh, an important bit of information. For the Xtool software to be able to run on your device, you will need to allow it quite extensive permissions. So. It will have access to your personal data, documents, images, and location. Some people might be okay with that, some people might not. If you're not okay with that, you have two options. You either get a separate tablet, a secondary device that you don't care about, or you go for the next product as capability in the X2 lineup, which is the X2 D7. You're getting an Android tablet, you're getting even more capability and you, need, you don't need to worry about permissions and all sorts of other stuff like that. If you still want to go ahead and if you go further to install the software, you will go to um, Apple App Store or uh, Play Store for Google. You will need to locate an app called Xtool AnyScan, download it and start the install process. In the install process, you will be using the activation code that you have on that uh, label which you should keep safe and you should make sure that you don't lose it. Uh, as a side note, the dongle is able to work with one mobile device at a time. So should you want to transfer it to a different mobile device, you delete it from your previous device and you follow the same steps on the other device. Other things to, to note, other things to consider. Once installed, the software pack is close to 11 gigabytes of storage and I've noticed that we can tweak it, tweak it. So if you don't want access to all the, the vehicles that Xtool is capable of scanning, you either don't install that software pack or after you have installed it, you just hold the selection and after that you can delete some of the stuff and free up the space. Should you want to install them after that in the update portion of your software, you're able to see what you have deleted and you are able to add them at any time when you want to. Install is done, you just pair it with your OBD dongle and you are off to the races. You are able to scan any vehicle that you now want. Okay, we will conduct some testing. In this review, we cannot just describe the overall things and not actually test the stuff. My testing will be a little bit biased because I'm already familiar with the D7 and many of the things that many of you guys might not even notice, I'm noticing because I'm always referencing the two of them. The tests have been conducted on the following vehicles, on a free series E90, on a free series F30, on my 5 series F10 and on a Honda Accord MK7. The main areas of interest for me were the diagnostic, diagnostic capabilities, the actuator testing, the bi-directional control bit of this type of device. I looked also into data logging, seeing how, how, how we are able to look at uh, actual data inputs from or data that is coming from the ECU. And I looked also at the servicing functions 
just from a general point of view. The most testing has been carried on the E90 and this is where I have been surprised. So the same capability that you're getting with the bigger brother, you're getting it on the smaller device. Both of them are really fast, both of them are really effective. And now for the first time in a long, long time, the fact that I'm not tied down to the vehicle with the cables was a very nice thing to have, interesting advantage. I've played around with the actuators on the engine, started the fans for the engine. After that, on the FRM module, I played around with the front lights, the rear lights, went outside of the vehicle, checked um, the lights are operating, and the freedom of having something that allows you to go outside of the vehicle is quite nice. Imagine doing uh, oil change for the gearbox, process at which you need to monitor the, the temperature of your, of your oil in the gearbox when you're filling it up. In the past, I needed to have someone in the vehicle to tell me the reading of the temperature. Now, I'm able to take that information with me. The dongle is connected to the vehicle and I'm able to read it from the outside. Quite an interesting feature. On the F30, Another use scenario for me, it was a BMW on which I performed a gasket change for the valve cover where quite an extensive bit of the engine wire harness has been disconnected. After the normal health checks, at, as a follow-up to ensure that everything is working properly on that vehicle, I decided to do the scan with this one, not having to go in the vehicle, not having to carry uh, the big laptop or uh, the D7, it was much comfortable, quite fast, quite easy to do, and the results were exactly as if I would have been uh, scanning with the original tool or with the more advanced D7. The advantage of having something like this is you avoid doing scratches, you avoid if you are actually doing some work that you have been getting yourself with oil or all sorts of other chemicals on your clothes, you don't want to damage the interior of a vehicle having access to the vehicle via Bluetooth was quite, quite useful. And it was able to run quite at the far distance from the vehicle. The other vehicle, the 5 Series F10, my vehicle of use on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis, that is where I played around with the data logging. And I've noticed that, yes, it is able to do data logging almost as effective as the bigger brother, the D7. However, at this point in time, it doesn't have the capability of exporting it as a CSV file. And if we take into account that the screen is really, really small, you're not really able to make best use of that data logging. Also, uh, their recording capability is more recording the screen rather than recording the value. At the same time, this type of tool, I don't see it as a data logging uh, monster. I don't see it as something that will be designed for something like that. It is more a tool that is specializing and it's helping you with basic diagnostics, maybe basic resets for oil, servicing intervals and things similar to that. Moving on to the Honda Accord. At first I was thinking, yes, I found something that this is not able to do and it's, it, it felt that it was really slow. It wasn't the fault of the diagnostic tool. I tested it after that with the bigger brother. That is how the system was on the Honda, on the old Honda Accord. So be mindful that you might have some vehicles where you're gonna feel that the diagnosis is slow, but it's not really the fault of the tool. It's just how the vehicle is designed being an older vehicle. Also on some older vehicles, again, we're discussing the Honda Accord many of the actuator functions and many of the functionality in the menu was not really working, was not really allowing me to achieve the tests that I was aiming for. And I would blame it more on the fact that the software is not refined for those older vehicles. Other things to consider and other glitches that I've seen in the system. On the D7, you are able to easily export a health check a report after you have performed a scan on the software that is connected to our A30M. It will automatically generate a report once you exit the diagnosis menu. So you're not having that much control of what you're exporting. You will rely more on doing print screens and saving the information like that. A small thing, but something that X2 can improve 
going further. Pros and cons. We, we're reaching kind of the end of the video and we need to summarize the stuff. Based on the price, this is pure diagnosis gold. The capability that it offers at the price point that it offers it is something that I wouldn't believe as being possible. As I stated it in the beginning of the video, you are taking advantage of all of the people that are spending serious money on the more expensive Xtool products and using the same software and many of the same capabilities on your vehicle at a fraction of the price. This type of diagnostic tool will help someone that is beginning to understand how vehicles are working or someone that wants just the comfort of being able to do a scan, something quite easy. It will help you if you want to buy and sell cars. Having something like this and connecting it to a vehicle is less threatening than coming to a vehicle with a big massive laptop or a big tablet to perform a health check. People might be more comfortable with saying, yeah, yeah, go and do a scan, not knowing that you have exactly the same capability as with the bigger diagnostic tools. Also, this one, I consider it as the ideal present. So right now it's at close to 150 pounds delivered in Britain. You can find it on Amazon, eBay, even AliExpress. And at this price point, if you're giving it as a present for someone that has a vehicle and enjoys working on vehicles, they will love you forever for giving them something like this. Although I have quite a lot of other diagnostic tools, the fact that I can keep this one in my car and just connect it to someone else's car and do a health check really, really fast, that ease, uh, ease of use is something that is priceless. Also, imagine that you're going on a holiday. You don't want to carry around a big tablet or a laptop. You have this, you're set to go. What are the less positive bits? The fact that you have to give access to so much of your personal data might be something that people will not really enjoy and might be something that will put off people from getting this type of device. Also, it is coming at a very good price point, but keep in mind that if you have 100 pound more in your bank account, going for the more capable unit might be an even better idea because you're able to do so much more things and you don't have to think about that security issue with allowing your phone to be connected to an app that might be a little bit uh, sketchy when in use. My overall opinion of this one, I'm still considering it as pure gold. If you don't have a diagnostic tool, go for it. If you have too much money and you want it as a secondary tool, it's useful. I'm, I will be using it as a secondary tool. I will be using it to replace my collection of other Bluetooth scanners for vehicles that I have lying around in my car. Overall, Xtool is keeping on track with developing quite interesting products. And I think that I will start a series in which I will try to show people how to make best use of these types of device. Now, I hope that this video gives you a little bit of insight regarding what these tools are capable of. If you want more content or if you have ideas for future videos, let me know in the comments below. And here is where we end this video.